previously I had made a video complaining about these keypads, the Safe House 49-535A. It is a very simple keypad. You have two LEDs that are hiding right there. On the back side, we have all of our connections, normally closed, normally open. We have a tamper control switch, which is hiding right here. And we also have our choice of do we want it to be a latching type switch or do we want this to be a momentary switch and for many years I was complaining about how I could not get any of these for cheap so I had tried looking for solutions to that problem what I had come up with were these wow that's really reflective hold on a moment here switch to one light there we go it's a little bit better so this says uh, data vision, data protect security systems. Uh, you have your keypad, you have your two LEDs again. But if we flip these over, it has significantly more wires to it than the other keypad had. Um, in fact, it has significantly more going on inside of this, and yet it does not have a microcontroller in it. So I'm going to pop these four screws out just to demonstrate to you. This is made by a company called Moose Products, by the way. And if we look at the, well, the wiring here does have a diagram to tell us, and it calls itself the MPI-275 instant LED, circuit status LED, uh, instant LED, circuit status LED, armed LED, alarm memory LED, AC LED, AC LED. It's worth noting out, these are all negatives. This one's a positive. And then we have A B keyboard, B keyboard, C keyboard, D keyboard, negative pre alarm, and 12 volts DC. Uh, what exactly is happening here is that you can see there's a bunch of holes here for LEDs that this keypad does not have. Um, instead, it has a piezo speaker, the two LEDs two resistors, and the keypad. And actually it's fun, if you look at these traces here, they're just kind of terminated, like there used to be an edge connector or something here, they've cut it off and they've put this pin, he pin header on. But my issue was to convert this over to act like a safe house keypad, I had to make this keypad act the same way. Now, the reason why there's four wires for the keypad is because this uses what's called binary coded decimal. Um, it's a little bit different than the regular keypads that you can find on AliExpress or wherever you get your cheap keypads. So most of the Arduino code does not work with this. So I pick the brains of two other people. If you know who you are, Nakomo and... Um, Dylan, uh, thank you very much. We tried on this one. We, we scratched our heads on it. Ultimately, because of just how alien it was, we were running into key bounce issues. And it was just dumb. Like, I'd push 9, and I would get 5. Or I'd push 0, and I would get 4. And it was because there's multiple contacts underneath here, and they all have to be, like tripped at the, at a, in the correct way and you have to buffer it to make sure that it knows that it may be a 4, it may be a 9, it may be something else depending on which contacts are being pushed within a certain time frame. So ultimately I gave up on this and set it aside. Now, not long after I got the keypad for the uh, Radio Shack unit there, um... I had to go to the Vintage Computer Festival uh, Midwest. Now, if you're asking the question why I'm so hooked on uh, these safe house keypads, like, why am I not using something better? I know IEI makes a modern take on this. Well, this house has an older security system, so this fits in perfectly, not just with that system, but with the decor as well within the house. And while it's kind of taboo to discuss a security system that you're using, um, for how basic these machines are, 
um, it allows for a lot of flexibility. Like if you want the keypad, you're replacing a key switch. Do you want infrared curtains? Easy. Uh, do you want motion sensors? Easy. Ultrasonic sensors? Easy. Pressure sensors? Easy. Door sw and window switches? Easy. Do you want output devices like lighting control, sirens, and of course telephone dyers, dialers and other messengers that contact the outside world to say that the alarm has gone off? Easy, 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 easy. I just don't have to pay a subscription service, so I do really like this system. But I digress. What I'm trying to get to here as I put this keypad back together is that one of the things that you do at VCF Midwest is that you raid what's called the free pile, which is to say you can bring in junk, I think some people would just consider it e-waste, and someone else will pick over it. And someone left a box of security system parts. And among those was this box right here. So it calls itself the 7341 dual decoder actuator from Silent Night Security Systems. And we notice again, BCD, one, two, four, eight, four wires. We have six volts that are regulated out. We have inputs and outputs for an armed and ready light. Hello. And then we have relay contacts down here. Plus our power input, power input which is our choice of AC or DC, six to 12 volts. I don't even have to really take this thing apart because it's so well made. It does have a warning here saying CMOS sensitive parts, but okay, we're aware of that. But what I love about this is just how simple it is. So this does exactly what I wanted with this keypad, and I'll show you. Um, it has no microcontroller. In fact, the date chips on many of these RCA chips are 1979 and 1980. Forget how much older this is than me. This is older than my car. And it's so... It's really well made. I like it. it. It doesn't have a tamper circuit on it, obviously, but that's easy enough to add in. But look how you set the combination on this. If there is a power failure on this, the memory resets, which is why there's a battery backup that's central to the security system. If you lose power on this you're actually setting the combination with little tiny brass nuts which are going into these little X and Y routed traces here. And this is essentially just a plug board because you're jumpering one side of the board to the other. So as I receive this, and the combination's not gonna say this way, uh, the code is 1357 and then for the fifth number, it has 5A and a 5B. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 8 operates one relay. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 operates the other relay. And I think these jumpers here control... Um, yeah, they go from 6 and 7. What did I say 6 and 7 was? Let me grab that again. Six and seven are our armed and ready light inputs. So yeah, I'm assuming this controls the polarity of these because those two um, outputs for the armed and ready are going through these two components here, which I'm pretty sure are just uh, high current or high current transistors, which are driving the LEDs. But uh, I think the 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 real go of the show here is I should wire this all together and uh, I will explain or at least demonstrate how this works. So let's get that out of the way. So if I look at the wiring diagram here I can say well we don't we'll need our t negative 12 or we'll need our positive 12 volts which is this one right here. And if I grab you and just look at you I can say positive 12 is terminal 14. We'll put that in there. Uh, Pre-alarm is going to be the piezo. We're not going to use that. And then above that, we have DCBA for the keyboard, or red, green, brown, and blue, which I will go with 
4, 3, 2, and 1. So 4, uh, 3, 2, and I said blue for number 1, so we'll do that. So this is all we need, is just these 5 wires. And then we have our keypad here, and then I will get ourselves 12 volts. So I want our negative and I want our, what, what was that? Oh, okay. There we go. There's our positive and there was a spike there of 200 milliamps, but it's settled down to like eight milliamps now. And so if I do one, three, five, seven, eight, it should click one relay. And it did. And if I do one, three, five, seven, nine, it clicked the other relay. Um, you're just gonna have to believe me on that one there. And if I do any other button combination, nothing. So it completely ignores it. So one, three, five, seven, eight. Now let's take one of these jumpers. And that just requires a screwdriver to take the screw off. And let's make that one, three, four, seven, nine. So the screw goes in. In. How did you get wet wrapped around? There we go. So one, three, five, seven, eight does nothing now. One, three, five, seven, nine does nothing now. One, three, four, seven, eight clicks it. One, three, four, seven, nine clicks it again. No programming besides setting jumper plugs. This is the kind of stuff I absolutely love. No microcontrollers. Plug board combination programming. It is not rocket science at all, it uses no power, and it's powered by your choice of um, 12 volts or uh, 6 volts. Yeah, that was a really cool find, and I hope you like this video.